All right. Hey, guys. Welcome. Thank you for joining us on this Thursday night. So I am Brad with Steve's Real Food, and I'm joined here again tonight by my friend Rob Ryan, owner and founder of Gussie's Gut. Um, and we are brought together tonight by this super awesome collaboration between the two. Um, these are the new protein bites brought to you by Steve's Real Food and Gussie's Gut. And we'll go into exactly what that means in just a minute here. So, Rob, again, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Brad. Good to be with, back with you. Yeah, absolutely. We had a lot I'm of fun just, uh, last time. I'm just noticing that I have uh, flat beanie hair today because it's very cold in Colorado. So my apologies, everybody. It happens, man. I'm um, up here in Michigan, and it's we had like a 40-degree day. We just lucked out. But it helped that I spent most of the day indoors. You know, I mean... It's, Helps keep my luscious locks uh, <laughs> beautiful. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, today, we're going to dive a little deeper into what makes these protein bites so cool. And really, a lot of the um, cool points from these is brought to us from Gussie's gut. But there's some cool stuff under the hood. So protein bites are an awesome freeze-dried treat. Each treat is 80% meat, and this is the same high-quality, humanely raised chicken or lamb that goes into Steve's Real Food. So this is the good stuff. Um, and then on our end, we're adding locally sourced raw honey. We're adding coconut oil. We're adding fenugreek. You know, it's an herb that's been around since ancient times, has some awesome health benefits. Um, but here's the kicker. We've teamed up with Gussie's Gut for a probiotic rocket booster. So you guys make a fermented superfood that you can add to dog's food in order to boost their overall health, right? Yep. That's um, right. Awesome. Well, I'm hoping, A, that you can tell me just a little bit more about the superfood. But first, I'm curious. I know there has to be a story behind this. I, I, I'm guessing you didn't just wake up one day and go, fermented foods. That's yeah. what I got to feed my dog. So yeah. Uh, so how the fermented uh, idea came to me? Mm -hmm. well, yeah, I'm curious. It, how did the whole thing get started? Yeah. 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 So uh, it started where Gus got into the trash and uh, I, I was uh, hurried one day. I forgot. I left it out. Uh, he, uh, it was out for a few hours and, uh, it was very tempting to him and he ended up, um, he got into it and he, I didn't know what it was, but he, I, I obviously at the end of the story, I found out he, it was a bottle cap, plastic, uh, cap from a plastic container of a half and half organic half and half bottle. And I, um, for about seven days, I didn't know what had happened to him. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what he swallowed, but he wasn't eating. And uh, I'm going to make this kind of quick because we don't have a lot of time to go through this. But uh, it was really, really uh, frightening. Uh, I did yeah. a sonogram on him. I took him to vet several times. He wasn't eating. Uh, all he was, I was buying uh, the big uh, containers of coconut water. And because that's yeah. a complete, uh, has protein, fats, aminos, all that stuff in it. And electrolytes, and, yeah. Yeah. So that's, I was giving him that every single day. He was taking mm. that beautifully. He was drinking that up. I've gone through, well, I don't know, 15 of the 32 ounces of those over this period of time. And uh, and then about the, la the last three days, he stopped um, drinking that. Um, mm. He loves coconut water. Right. So I was really panicked. Um, and about the, I think it was actually the eighth day, it was just after the seven days, he, he went outside and I was hopeful because he didn't, he hadn't consumed anything that he wanted to go out and go uh, to the bathroom and he wasn't drinking and he ended up uh, going number two and mm -hmm. he, he did a, let out a huge yelp and out came this bottle cap. Wow. So um, following that he had had the craziest, weirdest stools and yeah. just super weird. And, um, and, it, it was very inconsistent since then. And um, so the kind of, kind of person I am, I look at, I'm a kitchen sink guy. I like to throw the kitchen sink at things, 
I have a yeah. hugely awesome, like great uh, healthcare team for Gus. Um, one of the best vets uh, in the country. And we, you know, we looked at, you know, uh, probiotics and all that, but it wasn't really fixing the issue. So I decided to add in fermented foods. And I got really good over the pandemic in figuring out fermented foods. And I got more and more complex in my recipes. And then I thought, okay, A, this is really challenging to keep doing <clears throat> because I had it brought in about eight vegetables and superfoods in the in this recipe in particular. And it was a lot of prep. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it has to sit in your pantry. And I, I, I knocked it over a couple times in my pantry. Huge yeah. mistake. Vinegary, <laughs> horrible. Mm -hmm. I had screwed it up a couple times. There was mold uh, the beginning. So mm -hmm. I got really scared. I started asking people about it. It was, it was just a weird process for me. Yeah. But it was one I was interested in. And then I got really good at it. And then mm -hmm. I took this idea to a friend of mine who has a really great um, uh, company, uh, animal health company. And she said, oh, my gosh, this is incredible. You know, and then I said, you know, I'm going to reach out to Dr. Ian Billinghurst because about 20 at that time, 23 years ago, I had hired him to consult with me on my first dog. How to, he taught me how to feed my first dog as an adult mm -hmm. raw food. So yeah. I picked up the phone, I reached out to him again, and the rest is uh, history. For sure, man. That's crazy. Um, we all got good at a lot of things during the pandemic, didn't we? That was yeah, uh, right. <laughs> an interesting hobby to pick up. I lots, actually lots started- people got good at fermentation, sourdough, all that stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. I started culturing my own uh, lactobacteria around the same time. So absolutely. Beautiful. Rice, water, and milk. Yeah. The weird hobbies we pick up, man. Yep. Yep. So I got to uh, say my golden retriever, Chucky, um, he's 11 years old now. He had a growth on his side a little while ago. We had to take him in, get it taken off. Um, but during that uh, surgery and after the surgery, it was having some trouble healing up. And he went through several rounds of antibiotics. And after that, man, he was gassy, super duper gassy. And he's eating really, really good foods. Um, and he, he goes outside a lot and he, he gets, you know, Lots and lots of um, transient bacteria, lots of bacteria that he's eating on his own. I started adding in these protein bites, sprinkling on every single meal. And, you know, he's he's raw fed. He eats Steve's and then he gets some other cool things that I add as well. Yeah. Um, but the gas went away really fast once I started yeah. adding in those protein bites. And I don't know if I can give those credit for everything, but I would like to believe that they definitely help speed up the process. Nice. Um but I mean, that leads me to my next thing. Why fermented foods? Like <laughs> what, what exactly in, we can't get too specific because fermented foods, they're kind of just a general health booster, right? Because of all of the probiotic bacteria, all the beneficial bacteria, yeah. the um, availability of the nutrients. Um, but either, why did you think, Hey, fermented foods, you know, or, well, yeah, I mean, it's a great question. It, uh, we won't go too deep down the rabbit hole if people yep. want to go to our YouTube channel or just Google fermented foods for dogs. Karen Becker has a lot of good stuff to say about fermented foods. But I think, um, and, and there, there's a book called Forever Dog, talks about fermented foods. Mm -hmm. Fermented foods is a huge category. I mean, every one of us is eating fermented foods in our daily life. If you're drinking coffee, wine, beer, eating cheese, um, if you're, um, you know, obviously kimchi and sauerkraut, um, mm -hmm. sourdough bread, uh, these are all ferments. They're different types of ferments, but they're all ferments. And so fermentation is a really incredible way to um, make things taste better, uh, last longer, uh, and or uh, be more absorbable and um and what I like to call bio bioavailable um, mm -hmm. in your system and gentler on your gut. They the one of the products that uh, comes byproducts that comes from fermentation is probiotics. Um, what we've done at Gussie's Gut is we've decided to use fermentation as a way to uh, ferment functional foods, functional ingredients. We hand choose every single ingredient for your bites um, so that, and we'll get into this too, so that 
your dogs are getting better prepared to absorb and take, you know, transition into um, raw food or just have a healthier gut. Like, you know, mm -hmm. your dog doesn't need transitioning, but he sure could benefit from the bites, you know, by being, you know, he's, he was gassy mm -hmm. and, um, and probiotics, prebiotics, they, they help with that. So we just wanted to take functional ingredients and we ferment them so that they can be more, uh, easily digestible and all of the good stuff in each of the ingredients is more absorbable. And so we see a benefit with fermentation, um, fermented foods. We see a benefit in, for example, older dogs or injured dogs or dogs that have been given antibiotics. They can actually digest these much easier. So if you were to compare each individual ingredient that is not fermented, um, they might have a, a tougher time digesting, let's say, one of the ingredients, um, let's say, uh, you know, is, you know, uh, kale. Mm -hmm. Some dogs can have a real challenge with kale. When it's fermented, it's much easier to digest. It's much easier and palatable and absorbable. And all of the good things in kale uh, can be extracted from the digestive tract much easier. So, Right. So the bacteria is actually kind of pre-digesting um these awesome ingredients for your dog making them easier to break down once they're in your dog's gut right that's right so in the back yeah the bacteria is the one that does the work and you know there's this cre incredible uh mechanism that happens when you're fermenting there's uh, uh carbon dioxide is created and and it pushes out all the oxygen and it it ends up all the good uh, probiotics that are created crowd out any potential pathogen. So mm -hmm. it's a really safe and amazing food, you know, mm -hmm. and um, it, you get this uh, great benefit from um, all of the d diverse probiotics that are in there. And, and we don't add, it's really important. I think we should tell people that we don't add any external probiotics. So we do this thing called wild fermentation and that's mm -hmm. what your bites have in them. And when you see most products, they go to, there's usually about, there's, there's like five really big companies in the world, all over the world that make probiotics in a Petri mm -hmm. dish. They, um, they splice and multiply those organisms and they, they, they manufacture probiotics and mm -hmm. then they put them in a, in a delivery system of some, some kind of powder, uh, uh encapsulation, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, uh, most quote probiotics you'll see on the market, they're externally added probiotics made in a laboratory, not ours. Mm -hmm. The ones that the bites have are whole food based and made through nature. So it's, you know, it's, it's very consistent with your, um, you know, your motto at Steve's and, you know, to delivering healthy, whole, clean uh, products, mm -hmm. whole food. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's really one of the foundational beliefs that Steve's was founded on is getting all of your nutrition through actual food and kind of uh, reducing human intervention, right? Because we love to think of food as very mechanical. Well, we, we want more vitamin C. We're just going to bust out the ascorbic acid and that's what you get. That's the vitamin C. That's the active ingredient without looking at it as a natural system, which is what we are. And Brad, um, all of, you know, if you look at the rainbow of vegetables and superfoods and fruits um, that are available to us and herbs and grasses, mm -hmm. they, they have a litany of, veg of vitamins and minerals and, and other uh, phytonutrients that uh, are, can, are, are locked into those cell walls and mm -hmm. fermentation unlocks those. Right. And so, you know, what we chose for your bites is very functional ingredients that that um, and, and it, these include herbs, by the way, and those are fermented. And mm -hmm. so, you know, you're able to get a lot more out of these ingredients. The full potential of these ingredients is available to your dogs. Right. Absolutely. And uh, not only are you unlocking the nutrients that are locked away inside these ingredients, but you're also taking away some of the um, the things that get in the way besides just the, the cell walls, right? I mean, it, it just plain makes them more accessible. It will reduce any sugars that happen to be in there um, because the bacteria is going to feed on those sugars and reduce that. I know you're, you're already using a very low glycemic recipe. Yeah. Um, 
but it's going to reduce that even further. Um, so it, it really transforms food into kind of its hidden potential. It unlocks its hidden potential, I think. Yeah, that's right. Um, so Jenna, I see you have a question. I'm assuming this would be a good option for a dog with IBD. Um, do you want to address that at all, Rob? Well, I mean, this is a this is a great question. It's one we get a lot at Gus's mm -hmm. gut. I mean, we any gut dysfunction uh, could potentially, you know, we get into medical advice here. So, yes. what we always tell people, if you were to come to our site and ask us that question, is uh, potentially yes, and we'd love you to go talk to your holistic vet. That's what we say to everybody. Absolutely. Um, we, you know. What we like to do is we like the, the product to do the convincing and the selling for us. We're, we're very much at our company, uh, uh, a company that undersells and over delivers. Um, so there's tremendous, great potential in f what fermented foods can do for dogs of all sorts of um, ages, conditions. And right. so IBD is, and IBS, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, irritable bowel disease, um, is can be complicated and every mm -hmm. dog comes with a unique set of genetic and epigenetic factors and there's it's very complicated but yeah. um, I would say that this is a potential uh, option for you that you definitely want to uh, bring up with your vet and especially if you have a vet that understands nutrition you look at more you know holistic type vets um, functional uh, medicine vets mm -hmm. um, do a little bit of googling look at so you know some vets that do consulting like Dr. Judy, Dr. You know, Karen Becker has great videos on all of this and they explain mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, uh, I've just Googled the terms IBD, IBS and fermented foods in dogs. Yeah, absolutely. No, and that's, that's great advice. You know, it really does come down to the dog and you cannot, we can't cure bad genetics through food, um, but you can definitely bolster overall health, right? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, Dr. Billinghurst famously, now that you, you say that quote, it reminds me of, a, you know, something he says, which is, you know, you, you, you can't, um, you can't change bad genetics, but you can certainly help them with good nutrition. Well, that's probably where I got that idea. Undoubtedly. Maybe. Dr. Ian Billinghurst is awesome. Yeah. A great source of wonderful information. Um, so Jenna, it looks like you're also dealing with another issue. Would this help with anal gland issues at all? Um, and really, I think Rob, your original answer, I think hit this on the head already, you know? It, yeah. I mean, I, I think the, the right answer is potentially, um, and here's, here's from the anal gland uh, point of view. I used to have a dog that had, you know, anal gland issues mm -hmm. all the time. It, so I, I feel your pain. Uh, is it Jen was asking that question? Um, yes. Uh, sorry. Jenna. Okay. Yep. Jenna. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so I feel your pain. Um, so uh, that a lot of times is a matter of uh, the right fiber, and um, this is this is a full fiber fiber product, and um, it's just better digested and um, pre digested, so to speak, through fermentation. So potentially, it could help your dog with that. Yeah, absolutely, awesome. So hey, before we get on to the next piece, we're doing something a little bit fun tonight. Now we already teased this on the Steve's Real Food um, Facebook page earlier. We were testing this out and having some fun. But tonight we're going to hook up a few folks with some protein bites straight in their mailbox. And I'm really excited to get these into some folks' hands. This is gonna be really cool. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do a drawing in just a little bit. We have a fun little device that'll do all of the work for us and pick one person in the audience at random. All you have to do in order to potentially take home a bag of protein bites or rather walk out to your mailbox and grab a bag of protein bites. All you have to do is comment. Um, now, if you're watching this on YouTube, comments are not always enabled on there. OK, so I'm going to give you guys just a little bit of time. If you want to open up Facebook, you can either go to the Steve's Real Food Facebook page or you can go to the Gussie's Gut Facebook page. We're on both of them right now um, and just drop something in the comments. Absolutely anything you'd like. We're not going to do a fancy keyword this time. Um, you can comment as many times as you want. You're only going to be entered once. So no reason to go crazy on that enter button tonight. Um, but anything you want to throw out there, even if, it's, even if it's just, hey, having a good time or 
the name of your dog. I always love learning about what people name their dogs, what kind of dog you have. Who are you here for tonight? That's always a fun conversation. Now, as we're letting uh, as we're letting folks enter, and it actually looks like just about everyone who is watching now is also entered. So rather than moving on to our next point, because you know what? I have a few bags of these to give away tonight. So rather than moving on to our next point, well, our entries are still going up. Let's go ahead and move on just a little bit. We got the graphic up. This is a great time to talk about some of these ingredients, right? Because you have a lot of really cool stuff in here. And I'm not going to ask you to break down every single one. But man, you've been doing a ton of research. You have to have some favorites, undoubtedly. Oh, of ingredients? Yeah. Well, I mean, collard greens are amazing. They're, you know, they're 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 pulling a, a, a lot of weight in what they're doing. And then the fact that you, gosh, you know, a lot of dogs would have trouble you know, getting anything out of those collard greens. Uh, you know, I always tell people there's, you know, if you were to take a, you know, a leather shoe to a laboratory and get it analyzed, mm -hmm. you they would tell you that there's some protein in it and other things that, you know, doesn't mean you're going to get anything out of it if you were to right. eat the leather shoe, right? So a lot of dogs, I think, wouldn't get the benefit of the collard greens, but they will uh, with its uh, being a being fermented, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, this is really hard. I mean, there's, uh, <laughs> um, I think uh, I I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of, well, first of all, I really like the fenugreek that you put in. I'm a big fan mm -hmm. of fenugreek. Yep. Um, and, um, I love that you guys put that in there. That's, that's not provided by us and very wisely provided by you guys. Um, but I would say the, um, I don't know the, Boy, you, that's a tough question, Brad. Yeah, I'll put you on the spot uh, there, I mean, man. Gin, Sorry I mean, about that. Yeah. You know, gin, uh, slippery elm, uh, chamomile. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you why I chose those. Let me just say that. Uh, yeah. Those are, um, you know, what we're, what we're trying to do is create calm in the gut in this formula. And, you know, with our eye on transitioning and, mm -hmm. um and when we say transitioning, if your dog's already been on Steve's for a long time, you know, and and it's really comfortable with raw food, great. Um, mm -hmm. But but you know, Brad's dog uh, needed a transition. You know, he had been given antibiotics. That's mm -hmm. a transition. So this moment of you know sensitivity. You know, you've got a dog that's gut sensitive. You know, whether it's gas or diarrhea or just digestive upset. Mm -hmm. We put that in there to help with the calming and mm -hmm. um, and creating uh, ease and uh, and and having a dog feel comfort, gastrointestinal health and function. Yep. So um, I don't know. I would say that, uh, but they're and, all and that's, a, and that's a big part of it. I mean, we, a lot of times we get stuck on the minute or the actual problem. Rather, we look okay. There's a digestive issue. Let's treat that. Yeah. And we don't think, hey, what else, what other issues is this causing in the animal? Is the animal anxious? You know, um, you know, it, this is really a holistic view when you start talking about adding ingredients that add a calming effect. I mean, you're, you're really yeah. doing something holistically here. So that's very cool. Yeah. I mean, w what we worked on with you guys is on three pathways of support, mm -hmm. healing, digestive comfort and healthy mucosal lining. So the lining of the gut, um, it has to have the proper permeability and integrity, uh, mm -hmm. not only to absorb nutrients, but also to prevent the toxins, allergens, and the pathogens from outside from gaining access in the bloodstream. So, yeah. so what we're doing is, you know, back to the question of, of Jenna, I believe it was Jenna who asked about IBD. Mm -hmm. That's a, a permeability issue of the gut, among other things. So what we're trying to do is address in this formula um, the those three pathways of support, health, digestive comfort, and healthy mucosal lining. Yeah. And I'm so glad you, you talked about mucosal lining. That's something that um, I think a lot of times we forget is you basically have this beautiful protective layer of this mucus throughout your um, your intestinal tract. And um, keeping that little that little detail healthy, keeping it at its best is, is really going to help you absorb the nutrients that you need to 
and um, reduce overall just inflammation in the gut, help keep the bad stuff away from your actual, the cells um, that yeah. line the gut. Yeah. Um, I, I was reading a really interesting article that I'm not going to dive into today, but I, if I can find it before we leave today, I'll share it. Um, New York Times wrote it. They're talking about how they can predict your lifespan based on your microbiome health really cool article and it covered so many topics in like this five minute read so very awesome but all the, right the, the caveat to that is yep. that your your gut microbiome is always changing it's ever changing yep. so you you know if you were to get it tested today and they were to tell you you had five years to live or whatever right you know, that's not a death sentence you have the you have yes. the opportunity today yes. to change it in a few days Yes, absolutely. Uh, it, it's it's changed based on the bacteria that you eat, based on the foods that you eat. Everything you eat feeds all of the bacteria in your gut. You know? Your environment, so, your stress yeah. levels, your happiness. I mean, yeah. you know, we we talk a lot about um, at at our company about how little we actually, how much we know, and how little we know about yes. the gut microbiome. It's it's as complicated, honestly, as the galaxies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and we have billions and billions and billions of dollars being spent on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we know, uh, you know, they, they know more about the galaxies than, yeah, uh, yeah than we do. about. Oh, we also have a tendency to get very micro focused, though. I mean, right here, nature has already provided us most of the solutions that we have to a healthy gut, healthy microbiome and all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, and yet we're probably spending billions of dollars at this very moment trying to synthesize different things to augment our own yeah. microbiome or to strengthen it or to replace the uh, the players that used to be there and we've lost. Um, yeah. All right. Before we get too deep, how about we pick a winner? Are you down? That's great. I see right, people from Australia here. So okay. What? No. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> we should have thought about this when it came to postage before we uh, came up with this idea. All right. Let's do yeah. it. Let's do it. Let's have some fun. All right. I'm going to put up the uh, other banner. So if you guys don't get picked in this first one, don't worry. We're going to do a couple more. Let's go. Oh, I hope the Gussie's gut doesn't win. <laughs> right. <laughs> we would just draw again if that happened. Right. Roberta. Roberta Fox. Congratulations, Roberta. That's super cool. Well, I hope that you're excited. I'm excited for you. Um, awesome. We will reach out to you on Facebook and um, figure out exactly how to get these protein bites to you, whether it be by mail or a um, carrier pigeon. We'll get it figured out. <laughs> All right. And you know what? It's getting um, a little bit late. I was going to give away a couple bags. How about we do one more just right away? Well, we have this up. Yeah. Before we get into anything else, we may as well. All right. Draw again. Second chance, guys. Nice. Jessica Norman, congratulations. Awesome. Two cute dogs. Right? Absolutely. Oh, they are so cute. Jessica, if you're here, would you mind posting your dog's names? I always love to, uh, I always love that part. All right. And we'll give folks in the chat just a minute to hang out. Um, let me see here. So, We've been talking for a minute here. I'm going to scan up through the comments. I'm curious if we have any other questions that we haven't hit yet or any fun comments. So I'm going to go through here and we'll see if we, uh, we'll see what we got. All right, Liana. This is so cool. I've been reading The Forever Dog, and I love learning more about nutrition and how whole foods can really help my dog. Yeah, that's awesome. It's funny how far we've gotten away from real foods, right? I mean, you go up to your kitchen. What do you have? You have a refrigerator with maybe some fresh foods in it. Then you got a cupboard that's just full of processed foods. 
And then you go out and you, you eat anywhere Well, you grab some food on the way to work or something. You're eating more processed foods. It got to the point recently where I realized that every meal I was eating was pretty much the same thing. It was just a different form of bread. <laughs> Great. And, you know, I mean, there's there's a there's a lot of uh, opportunity and need for synthetic based um, supplementation. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, we can we can bring in Chinese herbs and those sorts of things uh, in a pill form. And those are all great. But as mm -hmm. much as we can uh, utilize whole real foods, uh, the better. Absolutely. I, I actually fall into the trap sometimes where you find out about some incredible superfood that has all of these health benefits and it oozes out of the rocks in Nepal and they scrape it up and um, like, wow, man, I should get some of that. And then I realize that I'm eating like toast and jam for breakfast and then a sandwich for lunch. Man, <laughs> just fix that part first. Stop trying to uh, <laughs> stop trying to put flashy wheels on a car that's got a busted engine. You're right, right. That's right. All right. Liana, I've been feeding raw food for about a month now. I started with Stella and Chewy's and Primal and found Steve's at my local nature pet store. I've been feeding Steve's for about two weeks now. I've noticed such a difference in Badger's coat and overall health. That is super cool. Um, there are a lot of raw foods out there. And personally, I think they're all awesome, or at least many of them are awesome. I rotate through. I, I do have my rock, which is obviously Steve's um, and has been for well long before I worked with Steve's. Um, but that's a cool story. And I, I'm really glad that you're trying new things out. Keep trying stuff, Liana. That's very cool. All right. Christy, any benefit to feeding fermented foods before whole prey diets in order to help with digestion? Um, now, I'm going to jump in first. I personally think feeding fermented foods alongside whole prey diets makes perfect sense. Um I mean, out in the wild, when they're eating the whole prey, a lot of times that includes the intestinal tract, which is going to be filled with fermenting produce and all sorts of cool stuff. So I think it is a very natural aspect to their diet that we have forgotten with some of these whole prey diets. Um, but Rob, I mean, this is your field. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, Christy, great. Good good on you for uh, whole prey diets. I mean, we definitely, I mean, here, you know, Dr. Billinghurst uh, does absolutely believe that uh, having vegetation in the diet is important. And, um, and, uh, you know, he is very open about, it doesn't all have to be fermented as well. Um, so, um, I'd say, you know, keep an eye on, on, uh, you know, as you're going through, whether it's Instagram or, you know, YouTube videos or, or books, uh, look at what, uh, some of the smart people in the space are talking about in terms of, uh, what vegetation to feed. Um, fermentation is great. All we're really doing at Gussie's Gut is we are optimizing and mimicking nature. So what I mean by that is, let's say you were to feed a whole rabbit. Um, you're limited in the gut contents of that whole prey animal. You're limited to what that rabbit ate. Okay, mm -hmm. well, that's great. And it's super appropriate in a biologically species appropriate way and ancestral feeding. But uh, what, what we're able to do in these Steve's Real Bites is we've hand selected some really great, uh, you know, dog friendly, cat friendly uh, vegetation, and we fermented it. So we've mimicked the gut contents of a prey animal. And so you're getting the best of both worlds. So I say kudos to you for whole, feeding whole prey. And, um, and yeah, yeah, you, you absolutely your dog will your dog or cat will benefit from feeding some fermented as well. Absolutely. And that's one really interesting thing that we uh, that we've been hearing is that cats have really been digging these protein bites, which is it can be hard to get them to eat fermented foods. So finding a form that they'll accept. That's awesome. I'm excited to hear that. They've got kind of a softer texture. The cats just they really dig them. It's cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, so one of the interesting things to think about, um, I'll just say to the audience on that note is um the way we ferment, and then when you add the fer the freeze drying on top of it that Steve's does, um, it seems to both of those two things combined seem to be much more palatable um, for dogs and cats than if you were to just give raw fermented um, 
you know, out of a jar. Um, mm -hmm. Some dogs are for that. You know, my dog Gus will eat anything. Uh, he's been, you know, he's been given a very diverse, you know, menu his whole life. So, I mean, if you threw, if you threw collard greens on the floor, he'd eat it. Yeah. Um, but that's not the case, especially with, you know, finicky dogs and cats. So, mm -hmm. um, there's something about it that they instinctively understand is good for them and is something they can handle. Um, you know, just like how they can select certain grasses when they're on their walk and not other grasses. There's a weird intuition there. That's amazing. And, mm -hmm. um, so those cats, um, that Brad's talking about, you know, they, they, they get it, they get it. You know, they understand. Yeah, the uh, biological intelligence is so weird. I've got um chickens. I, I keep chickens out in, uh, you know, we have a decent amount of space. Um, and they know which plants to eat and which ones to stay away from. And I always thought that was wild, you know, and it doesn't, it never seems to be trial and error. It's just, they know. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, very cool. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, look, and if you think about it this way and just get gross for one second, turn your ears off if this gross, if, if talk, poop talk uh, grosses you out. But, you know, we've all seen dogs, whether it's our dogs or, um, or other dogs, uh, eating some sort of feces on the ground, uh, mm -hmm. animal feces of any kind. And, you know, it's very interesting. There's a lot of feces around and they're picking this one and this one, but not the, all these around. So there's a, there's a, I like that biological intelligence that you, that you said, Brad, that's, um, mm -hmm very well said there's a there's a very unique intelligence that these animals have absolutely yeah we probably have it too we just forgot how to listen to it yeah right that's true <laughs> that's true ford prefect so um not many people would get that reference i gotta say i love that man awesome if that's really your name cool you got cool parents if uh if that's just the name you go by hey i got the reference i dig it um what are some fermented foods we can add to our dog's diet right now while waiting for the bites to be released? Well, they're released. They're shipping all over the country, but there's undoubtedly some great stuff you can reach for. Um, I have heard sauerkraut recommended before in very, very small amounts. Sauerkraut's awesome, full of probiotic bacteria, super duper cool. Making some of these basic ferments at home can actually be really easy. Um, Last week, I, I made one upstairs, chopped up some veggies, um, slight process, but almost not, you know, add some salt to it. I needed it for a little while, put it in a jar, and that was pretty much it. You know, I mean, it was, it's a pretty easy process and wait for it to ferment. Um, but again, Rob, this is um, totally your arena. So what else do you have for us? Well, I mean, I would say uh, the easiest thing for you to do is look at the ingredients, go to the Steve's website, look at the ingredients that we fermented, copy that recipe, uh, go to our website, gussiesgut.com, look at our recipe. We have a, we make a product that's mm -hmm. different. It's, um, it's our product that is a, we use as a, we make it as a powdered topper for your dog's food. And that's a, a very comprehensive 19 ingredient formula, but look at any of those and pick those. They're all, they're all handpicked for you know, for benefits for dogs. Mm -hmm. and, and we keep talking about dogs who are going through transitional times, dogs who are having issues. What about for dogs that aren't having any issues? Personally, I believe in adding a little bit of this to every dog's diet anyway, just to give them an awesome boost. Um, yeah. I'm guessing you agree with that. Oh yeah. I mean, these, none of these ingredients that, that we've, um, created for your bites, um, are um you know they they always can be added to your um to your repertoire to your dog's diet they're they're valuable um on there's no it's not a me it's not like a medicine where you know a treatment um you can incorporate that into your dog's diet at any time so um mm -hmm. you know is that is that the answer to the is that the question that that is the question I was asking. Is you know I, I think sometimes we get too heavily focused on dogs who visibly need help, whereas yeah, many animals need help and they don't show anything, um, don't show any symptoms. And other animals, you know, they're perfectly healthy. But you know, I think we could all benefit from some yeah. of the cool stuff sometimes. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, our you know our dogs can always benefit from more nutrition, and you know we. We always say, you know, Dr. Billinghurst always says that, you know, there's no overdosing on these fermented vegetables. It's uh, just as you wouldn't overdose on a serving of vegetables for yourself. Instead of having one, you had five. 
it's just uh, just about the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what I've been doing lately. I mentioned that before my diet. I, I realized, oh my gosh, I'm talking all day about eating whole foods and really eating, you know, <laughs> very beneficial species appropriate diets, and here I am just shoveling inconvenience foods. Um, right. And so, yeah, I recently I've started eating basically as many fruits and vegetables as I can. And I can tell you, you can't overdose on those. And the more you eat, the more your body goes. Yeah, you're doing the right thing. Keep doing it. Yeah. Yep. Um, so as Leslie goes through the comments and sees uh, to look if there's any more questions that we missed, I know that we have at least one more bag of protein bites at the office. So since I have the giveaway tool up, how about we draw again, guys? You guys down? I'm going to hit the draw again button, and hopefully Gussie's gut doesn't win this time. <laughs> it's funny to me that both Gussie's gut and Steve's real food ends up in this drawing system. Nice. <laughs> Why would you want to win your own drawing? I know. Patty, congratulations. Yay, Patty. I still hope you're still here. I know people join and leave sometimes um, since this is live. But yeah, congratulations, Patty. We will reach out to you and figure out how to get these awesome, awesome treats into your mailbox. That's great. All right. And yeah, I'm she's going... there. She, she, uh, I just saw she said thank you. Oh, sweet. Congratulations, Patty. All right. So I think that's three winners tonight. Um, I'm pretty sure they told me I have four bags. <laughs> so I'm going to pick one more. Worst case, if I screw up, I'll, uh, I'll tape the top of this shut and I'll mail it to you. I'm just kidding. We'll get you a fresh bag. Don't worry about it. So let's pick one more just for fun. After this, I think we're going to probably get close to calling it a night. Um, we can answer any questions if you guys have any additional ones, but let's hit this button one more time. It's a fun button to hit. <laughs> Right. Colleen, congratulations. Oh, she has a nice picture of her family. Yay. Right. Look at all those kids. My goodness. <laughs> You're trying to compete with me over there. <laughs> Do you have any kids, Rob? No. no. Dogs. Dogs. Furry kids. Yep, absolutely. Right. Yep. I have three. Oh, wow. Yeah. You, did you hear the exhaustion in my voice there? I didn't try to put that in there. That was just a I natural know. thing, man. I know. Oh, <laughs> bless your heart, Brad. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it together over here, man. <laughs> All right. So that's it. We have given. Oh, those are your grandkids. Awesome. Well, congratulations. That's super cool. That means you get all the fun and none of the work. That's great, Colleen. All right, I'm going to see if there's anything else here. I want to, oh, we don't want to share that tonight. Let's go to the nice purple one as we close it out. All right. Well, as we take a last minute look through the chat, if you guys have any questions, now's your time to toss them on here. Um, I really want to thank you for joining us tonight. And Rob, I really, really want to thank you for joining me as well. Thank you. Um, just a, a repository of information and I can't wait to keep mining your brain for more. Um, and luckily we have one more of these scheduled. So is it January 17th? Um, I believe it's January 17th at 7 PM. I meant to have it already set up so you guys could just sign up for it now. And I dropped the ball and didn't set it up yet. So keep your eye on the Steve's Real Food Facebook page. Keep your eye on the Gussie's Gut Facebook page, the YouTube pages. Um, I believe you posted on your Twitter as well, right, Rob? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Um, so keep your eyes open. And um, yep, January 17th. Awesome. So I really hope to see some of you guys there. Um, hopefully we'll have some more bites to give away. That's always fun. Um, and maybe we could have some other fun things planned. Now I'm going to take one last glance at the chat and it looks like we're all good. It looks like we hit all of our questions. Great. 
So before I cut us off, Rob, is there anything else that you wanted to say? And I just did not go that direction at all. No, I think you asked you you asked some really great questions, and I think uh, the people who are on and and contributed questions were those were great questions. And mm-hmm. um, you know, I mean, I think that uh, when you when you look at fermented foods, there's nothing to be afraid of. Um, mm-hmm. You can you know you can think of them as being a um, an easier, gentler, digested version of the ingredient you're looking at, and um, and uh, with a bunch of other things added to it, um, including probiotics, prebiotics, all of that, and postbiotics. Um, so the effects of eating those are, um, they're numerous, and it really just depends on the dog or the cat um, and, and their health and their genetics and all of that and mm-hmm. what they get out of it. Yeah, that's awesome. But you're, you're still it really maximizes the benefits of each of these ingredients you put in there and it helps them work together in a a very, very cool, cohesive, symbiotic way. Yeah, that's Um, right. I really dig this. Now I, uh, I was hoping for a while that we would come out with treats, you know, I mean, I've loved Steve's real food for a long time. And so treats are just the next logical thing. I usually just used the freeze dried as treats. I have fun with those and treat toys and things like that. But the fact that we were able to partner with you on this, this is just so cool. You know, these ingredients, it's not just a a treat that's beneficial. I mean, it's really powerfully functional. Um, So I really dig that. I really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, we don't we don't we're not in the food business. And, you know, we're our partnership with you is incredibly important to us. And, you know, we wanted to um, have access to. People feeding raw and transitioning. We're really interested in having these these uh, households that are taking their dogs off of processed pet food and onto mm-hmm. real food. And um, and so when this came up um, for us to be a partner together, I was very excited. I mean, I think we were our our mutual excitement, and I can also speak on behalf of Dr. Billinghurst. We're all we're very excited about this partnership because. We're matching up a really amazing whole food company, uh, and if I can call you that, and mm-hmm. and then adding up, adding in uh, fermented foods, and um, you know, so you know these this slide that you're on is uh, the it's the triad of benefit that you get from uh, these the probiotics in in fermented foods. So you get prebiotics, which feed the microorganisms, the probiotics, which are the microorganisms, and then the postbiotics, which are the metabolites and the benefit, all the these cool beneficial processes that happen after you've um, had the, the first two. So. Yeah, absolutely. We, we started talking about, I think most people know what prebiotics and probiotics are, even if they don't fully understand, but uh, postbiotics is a word that's hasn't been thrown around a whole ton. So I wanted to put this graphic up so people could check that out. And, and you know, companies are making uh, postbiotics also in laboratories and there, mm-hmm. there's going to be tons of them, you know, that are produced. Um, it, it's becoming a hot topic, I think. And uh, they're making it for feed for cattle and, and, um, and uh, farm animals. And uh, mm-hmm. they're putting it in treats for dogs. And so, you know, there are always going to be prebiotics, pro and postbiotics that are manufactured synthetically. We, mm-hmm. I call them biological synthetics, um, and I just you know think it's really important that um, in our relationship, uh, Brad, um, with Steve's, this is a one hundred percent whole food, um, you know, super clean product. Yeah, absolutely, and that's that's a great thing to point out. There, there's, we're not doing anything synthetically we're keeping human interaction to a minimum right yeah we're just it's our job just to gather nature and get it as safely and cleanly as possible into your pet's bowl yep um that's a belief i've always stood behind at steve's so really quick i I see you have a a question patty and i'm going to hit that for sure but really quick i'm also going to post an invitation well maybe there we go um, an invitation to our upcoming webinar. We're doing a, a webinar called The Power of Living Food. And I see I didn't space out the link very well. So you may have to do some fancy copy and paste. Um, 
But we're doing this webinar, The Power of Living Food, which is a great place to start for people who are brand new to raw food, maybe want to know about the benefits, maybe want to know about the history of processed food. How did we get into feeding kibbles? Um, this is a great place to start. So I'm going to post just, no, I'm not, I didn't have the link pay, uh, copied anymore. I'm going to copy and post just the link. Won't make any sense just on Facebook after the fact, but this is for you guys. Um, and then I'm going to come up just a little further and we will pop this question back onto the screen because I've lost it. Here we go. Patty, quick question. How do you best get someone started on a product like this who has no idea of raw? And so the beauty of this when it comes to these protein bites is there's no ramping up. You don't have to get started. You don't have to transition. You can start just feeding them as treats right away. Um, since it is, um, you know, awesome and full of all these probiotics and everything. Um, personally, I like to start a little slower anytime I add in different kinds of probiotics or anything that's really super healthy like this. Um, but yeah, you can start treating with these right away. Um, you don't have to do anything fancy. They're not dangerous. They're completely safe, um, completely safe for your animal. Um, so there's no ramping up process associated with that. Now, if you start considering going on to a raw food or even feeding just a partially raw diet, which is what I did for years, um, you can start adding it into your dog's diet exactly the same way as you move from one kibble to another. It's just a slow transition process. What I usually like to do is I'll get a bag, you know, I always recommend people get a five pound bag of the Steve's frozen nuggets. Um, and for the first couple of days, just feed them as treats, feed them in between meals as treats. A, they make a fantastic treat. They're super duper healthy and they're delicious, but that also lets their body know that, Hey, there's this cool thing on its way. Um, without messing with their meals and causing any mealtime stress or anything like that. Um, after those few days, you can just start removing a little bit of their kibble and adding in a little of the raw. And every day you just increase the amount of raw and reduce the amount of kibble. Um, very easy process. You can do separate meals if you'd like. For a long time for Chuck, so Chuck weighs 100 pounds. For a long time for Chuck, we would do a breakfast of raw and then in the evening, he would get the rest of his meal in kibble. And now he was only getting 20% of his diet in raw. You know, it's only a little bit. And we did this for a while. But within a month, within just a month of doing this, I did notice some pretty cool changes. His teeth were a lot cleaner. His gums looked healthier. Right before we started doing this process, he was about four years old. And he had a lot of inflammation or a little bit of inflammation right around the edges of his gums right around the 30 day mark of just doing this 20% raw, that inflammation was gone. That, um, that tarnishing on his teeth that had just started building up around age four, also gone. He had beautiful pearly whites set in these healthy, healthy gums. Um, his energy seemed a lot higher, or a little higher. He just seemed a little happier, a little healthier. Um, and all that from just 20% of his diet. Um, so it's easy to add this in and we skipped days too. We didn't, there was no consistent, this has to be set in stone. We have gotten in the habit of treating food, especially for dogs and cats, like it's a prescription, right? This is the one you feed, you go in, you get the same flavor every single time. And that's what he gets his whole life. But it's not a prescription, it's food and it's okay to treat food like food. You can move around a little bit. Um, so yeah. it's, it's something I always just like to mention is that you don't have to feel like you're nailed down. Um, Ford Prefect, um, any good books, videos, or other resources to learn more about the benefits of fermented foods? So, oh, Rob, this is right up your alley. I'm sure you've read some fantastic fermentation books. Oh, yeah. Um, there's there, there's so many, uh, the benefits of fermented foods. Uh, well, I, I would, I'm assuming this is, uh, this is specifically pertaining to dogs and cats. So I'll say... Um, just uh, type into Google or YouTube, uh, Karen Becker and fermented food. She talks a lot about that. She's got a lot of videos on fermented foods. Um, I think Dr. Judy also, Dr. Judy Morgan has a lot of those online uh, YouTube videos. Um, 
great, great books. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Sandor Katz has uh, phenomenal uh, books on fermentation. Um, and then um, just one question back, if I can uh, go back one question, which is, um, you know, Dr. Ian Billinghurst is, you know, they call him the father of raw food. And he famously says, look, um, you're going to you're looking for perfection over time. So for anybody who's really worried about, you know, transitioning to raw food and, oh, gosh, you know, what do I do next? I was there. Um, I was I've been there. That's, um, you know, I, I like I said, I picked up the phone. I actually was referred to, to Dr. Billinghurst by Dr. Marty Goldstein and so I immediately was one of these guys that was super, you know, consumed with doing everything right, right at the beginning with my first puppy. So weeks before I got my puppy, I knew, okay, I got to get ready here. I got to have my healthcare team. So I called up Dr. Marty Goldstein. Um, you can Google him. He's quite, quite well known and well regarded. And he referred me over to Ian and Ian taught me. But one of the big things that Ian taught me was it's about perfection over time. Um, so over weeks and months, not looking at days and, and meals uh, to be perfect every time. But if it makes you feel more comfortable to find a nutritionist or lots of nutritionists online, do your due diligence and find somebody who can guide you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's something I love to I love to hear. And, and I'm glad that you picked up that point that I missed that every meal doesn't have to be balanced. We've gotten in this habit of thinking that every meal has to be perfectly balanced. And if you have too much of this or too much of that, your dog's going to fall down and die right away. Um, yeah. But we don't eat that way ourselves. You know, it's balance over time. We are natural systems and this is yeah. how we support ourselves the best. I, I love this, this comment, Allison, just she, that to that question, Allison Burks Putman, she says, uh, go for it. It's natural. My dog was a scavenger when I found him. And that's yeah. an interesting part about, you know, these questions, you know, we're answering them in a bit of a vacuum. We don't, you know, so some people that have adopted a dog yesterday, he, you know, he, she was, you know, running the streets of some, some town eating out of dumpsters. And, you know, he'd been picked up by multiple, uh, you know, uh, rescues, perhaps he was vaccinated each time. So he's been over vaccinated. You mm. know, God only knows what he's been treated for. And then you get him into your home. So, there's a lot of, we don't know all the history sometimes of our dogs. So mm -hmm. um, focus on the really good whole quality um, ingredients. And, um, and if you feel like you need to, you, you need to incorporate it slowly, do that. And then once you get the green light and there's no negative reaction, then, uh, you know, go all in. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I'm going to take a quick scan through the comments. We're getting to about the hour mark. And Rob, I'm feeling like it's probably a good place to call it. Yeah, this is great. There's great comments. Um, so oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. yeah, you can see all these in YouTube and Facebook. And thank you guys all so much for joining. This has been a really fun night. A lot of interaction tonight. A lot of people in the comments. This is cool. I wish I had another bag of pro uh, protein bites to give out, but I've exhausted my supply for this time. I sure hope that you come back for our just uh, January 17th episode. Um, I'm hoping I can get some more bags set aside then because I like hitting that button a lot. Um, it's fun. It just needs a sound effect. I'm going to try to figure that out before we get here next time. All right. And again, I think we've answered all the questions. I've gotten the go ahead over in our chat. So... Rob, great. Thank you for joining me. It's been a yeah. fantastic night. It's a lot Thank of fun. You, Brad. Uh, Thanks, everybody who's come on. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone who's here tonight. Thank you so much. Thanks for hanging with us. Um, hope to see you next time. Don't forget to join um, Power of Living Food, our upcoming webinar. And then, um, you know, if you're coming from the Steve side, go over to Gussie Guts. Um, is your YouTube page the best place to go or your Facebook page? Because I know you have a ton of information. You have a ton of interviews, resources. Yeah. Um, where do you recommend people go? Yeah, well, I, I think if you're, uh, we don't have a lot on Facebook, but if you're partial okay. to getting more educated and, and watching more YouTube videos, then our YouTube channel, just type in Gussie's Gut. 
And uh, and then our Instagram uh, is at Gus. Everything's at Gus. He's got uh, G U S S Y S G U T. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Rob. And uh, you all have a terrific night. Bye, everybody.